Hi, I'm Alexander Rose. I'm the director of the Long Now Foundation. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the torpedo data computer aboard the Pompanito. Um, it was first showed shown to me by Richard Pekelny. Um, he and Terry Lindell restored this computer to fully working order. It's uh, one of the most complex mechanical computers ever built. Um, we happen to have uh, this amazing example here in San Francisco. Um, and not only is it the most advanced and complex uh, mechanical computers, or at least one of them, it's also the most compact, is that they had to be fit into a submarine. So it had the complexity of about 500 Swiss watches um, and with life or death consequences resulting from its results. A very incredible machine that did uh, amazing integrated equations on the fly to solve a very difficult problem of the time, which is uh, to correlate the position of the submarine with the target and all the uh, mechanics of the torpedo all in real time um, while both are moving. Um, what follows is a, is a piece by Terry Lindell um, about how this, uh, this machine works. The TDC aboard the Pompanito is a Mark III and one of only two of its type installed in a historic submarine. The other is aboard the USS Bofin in Honolulu. Pompanito's TDC has been restored to fully operational condition. The TDC was unique in World War II. It was a computational part of the first submerged integrated fire control system that could track and continuously aim torpedoes by setting their gyro angles. Uh, another thing that was invented solely for this was basically servos, the idea that you could uh, move a, move a um, move a motor on one end and then have the motor on the other end do exactly that same motion. Um, the TDC Mark III gave the U.S. Fleet submarine the ability to fire torpedoes without first estimating a future firing position, uh, changing the, the ship's course or steering into that position. So instead of hoping that nothing changed in the setup, a fleet submarine with the TDC could fire at the target uh, when the captain judged the probability of making the hit uh, to be the greatest. Um, a World War II, in World War II, a torpedo's gyro angle was set mechanically um, while it was in the tube. A shaft known that they call the spindle um, slipped into the socket near the housing of the torpedo's coarse gyroscope, and when the fire control system rotated the shaft, the gyroscope inside that torpedo rotated. So then after being fired, the torpedo traveled on a straight course for a known distance, which they called the reach, uh, with a delay, and then um, the torpedo's gyro was released and steered the whole gyro um, after being activated by a threaded shaft um, attached to the screws. Once engaged, the steering mechanism brought the torpedo to a new course based on the angular offset of the gyroscope that was set by the TDC. So the Mark III computer consisted of two sections, the position keeper and the angle solver. The position keeper tracked the target and predicted its current position. To do this, the position creeper um, automatically received the input of the ship's own course from the gyro compass and the ship's speed from the pit log. The position keeper had cranks on its face that set the target's length, so how long the ship was, its estimated speed, and the angle off the bow of the submarine. It also contained a sound bearing um, converter that calculated the target's location based on sonar measurements. So all the sensors of the ship coming in to this one point and being mechanically um, fed into a whole series of gears and integrated into a single equation. Um, the position keeper solved the equations of motion integrated over time. The result was a continuous prediction of where the target was at any instant. Successive measurements of the target's position were compared to the position keeper predictions and corrections of error were introduced with a hand crank. So this allowed people who were operating the TDC to, um, to enter in any corrections that they felt were necessary because of, of uh, 
any issues that were going on outside of the ship's sensors. Um, the predicted target position became more accurate as the measurements made and corrections uh, made smaller. So it, w it was typical to get an accurate track on the target after about three or four observations um, under good conditions. The angle solver automatically took the target's predicted position from the position keeper, combined it with the tactical properties of the torpedo, and solved, the torpedo, solved for the torpedo's gyro angle. Values calculated from the solution were returned to the position keeper in two feedback loops. So that then the gyro automatically went to each of the torpedo rooms and set the torpedo continuously. And so basically the, torp the TDC is controlling both torpedo rooms, fore and aft, and all torpedo tubes at once. So it, it is able to set through a series of these servo motors the firing solution for all 10 torpedo tubes, uh, one, a set of six, I believe, forward and a set of four aft, that um, were all tracking the target. So at any point, the captain could launch um, a torpedo, and any one of those torpedoes would try and find the target. The US Navy thus had the system that would point um, the torpedoes at a target um, as the fire control problem developed. The TDC Mark III was the only torpedo targeting system of the time that both solved for the gyro angle and tracked the target in real time. The comparable system used by both Germany and Japan could compute the, and set the gyro angle for a fixed time. So they could only do it for a fixed time that they tried to predict in the future and then, and then fire on that time, but they couldn't do it um, continuously by tracking the target. So the idea of the, pis the position keeper and its iterative reduction of target position error was unique to the U.S. Navy and represented a really distinct advantage. Um, one of the other cool things that's inside of there um, are these three-dimensional cams um, that allow it to do kind of integrated math and this is uh, similar to um, a three-dimensional cam that we use in the 10,000 year clock to solve for the equation of time as it evolves over 10,000 years. So you might want to keep a lookout for both of those. Thank you.